you. Number plate, bulbs, windscreen wipers, and even where you live can actually put the brakes on your car passing its MOT test. And now millions of test reports from across Britain have been scrutinised to reveal the best and the worst motors for passing and failing as our transport correspondent Richard Westcott now reports. <laughs> Even the most careful drivers give their cars a pounding. That's why one in five fails its first MOT. Motoring website Honest John has spent months ploughing through every single test conducted across Britain, millions of results from thousands of garages, to come up with the best and the worst on the road. What we want manufacturers to do is look at this data, look to see where there's room for improvement and act upon it to uh, increase uh, the MOT pass rates for owners of these cars. Despite being big sellers, the Renault Megane and the Citroen C4 Picasso are amongst the worst performers. Three out of every ten failed first time. The top model was the Suzuki Splash. Just one in ten failed. Other Japanese makers, Lexus and Honda, also did well. But failure isn't always down to the car. Owners are often to blame too. We would be very confident that a vehicle that was maintained in line with the manufacturer's um, you know, kind of servicing schedule that had been seen by uh, a reputable dealer or garage really shouldn't have a problem passing its MOT. What's interesting about these figures is it's not just the car you buy that could potentially affect whether or not it passes its first MOT. It's also where you live. Clipping roundabouts can mess up your suspension, so it's no surprise that Milton Keynes, often called Roundabout City, sees more suspension failures. Corrosive, salty sea air also means more bodywork failures on the coast and Fords have the best pass rate in Ilford and Romford, right next to their Dagenham plant. Record petrol prices are making cars eye-wateringly expensive to run. This data could help motorists save a little cash by spotting problems before they go in for their MOT. Richard Westcott, BBC News. And the uh, motoring journalist, uh, Daniel Harrison, who you saw in Richard's report, um, is here. So this is fascinating. So now you've collated all this information and people can really tell a lot about their car, can they, from this information? Absolutely. This is the first time that motorists have been able to find out exactly what's going wrong with their car, broken down by model and year. Mm. If you go onto the website, you'll see uh, that you can go through, pick a, pick a manufacturer, pick a model, and then you'll get a detailed drop-down of exactly what is going wrong on your car, right down to a blown headlamp bulb. Does that mean, then, if you look at it, you can sort of address the issues more easily and get it through Absolutely. its Absolutely. Um, from the research that we carried out, uh, around 20% of all failures are related to headlamp bulbs and uh, indicators and that kind of thing. And that equated last year to about 4.8 million failures. Mm. Um, one of the curious things that's emerged is that, you know, go to one place and you'll get through, go somewhere else and you won't. Yeah. I mean, you would have thought this would be a standard practice across the board. One test, same same rules apply. This is what, another one of the interesting things that's come out of this data is for the first time ever we've been able to see that uh, whether you pass or fail an MOT, uh, MOT uh, depends on where you are in the country. Those areas that are at the extremities of the country, um, those in Scotland, um, on the coast of Wales, uh, down in the southwest, your chance of passing MOT are less than if you're in and around London. Um, and those cars tend to have more of a hard life, there's more salt in the air, it gets colder, there's more rain. Um, and it shows in the uh, MOT figures. I'm um, interesting. So, what's your advice to people? Because it's expensive if it, if it fails its MOT because you've got to correct what's wrong mm. with it and then put it through mm. again, haven't you? So, what's your yeah. advice to people? Our advice is to not get caught out on the simple things that you can fix yourself. If you go onto the site, you'll see that there's uh, a list of the common problems that what you've sort got. Of thing? Uh, the things you should be looking for are checking that all the light bulbs um, mm. around the car work that's your headlamp bulbs, your indicators, the stop lamps. And the one that seems to catch a lot of people out is the two little lamps above uh, the registration plate. If one or both of those has failed, that's a failure. Also check your wheels. Uh, you need to check the, the tread. Use a 20p piece. Um, there's a little uh, edging around the 20p piece. If your tread is less than that, um, you're going to fail your MOT. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, check for bulges around as well, yeah. Thank you very much, all good advice. I should be doing that. Thank <laughs> Thanks very much for that. Let's see what's coming up this morning, BBC News.